What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bron Bafflestone. So today we're having another episode of my Deep Dive series. Today looking at the spell Immovable Object. This is a second level Graviturgist spell. And to be quite frank, I'm not that impressed with the Graviturgist subclass. It uh, has pretty unimpressive subclass abilities in my opinion. And the specialty spells that they get are largely unimpressive to me. Mostly just fancy blasts, and I'm not really a fan of blasting as a spellcaster playstyle, so I'm not really a fan of the Grabber to just subclass. However, they do get some decent spells. Uh, Gift of Alacrity is a fantastic elite spell that I wish I could get on every character, and Fortune's Favor is okay. But Immovable Object is fantastic. This spell alone I think makes Graviter just rather formidable, and if you play it right, it can be borderline broken. So without further ado, let's take a look at this really interesting spell. So Immovable Object is only a second level spell, so relatively low opportunity cost. You get this spell pretty quickly, and there's not a ton of amazing spells that compete with it. Now it is difficult to acquire. It's only available to Graviturgis and to Bards through Magical Secrets. Although I will say that the Explorer's Guide to Wildemount does specifically state that the DMs can choose to add these spells to other spell lists, so it's at their discretion, you can always ask. And I first want to point out that the spell does have some very interesting non-combat uses. For example, you can use it to create a hovering castle, or floating stairs, or things like that. You just upcast the spell and create permanently immovable sheets or some such, and then you can build your castle right over the top of it. And this spell can essentially replace the ever popular immovable rod magic item. That's one that I've never been a huge fan of, but I know it's got a cult following, and so if you like to use immovable rods to you know, get up to some shenanigans, you can pretty much do the same thing with immovable object. However, during combat, I'm compelled to point out that Immovable Object is a no-concentration, one-hour duration spell. Those types of spells are gold in combat. And you can increase the duration and save DC by upcasting it. It becomes permanent when cast at 6th level. Oh my goodness, that is really good. Plus, if it's upcasted high enough, you can make it literally impossible for a lot of creatures to pass the save DC. Additionally, with such a long duration, you can rest trick it, especially when you're upcasting for that increased duration, and that can be amazing. See my deep dive series video on rest tricking for more info about how that can work. Now, the most amazing thing about Immovable Object is that it can target wielded or worn objects with no saving throw, and rules as written, that includes those wielded or worn by your enemies. Getting a no-save control option as only a second level spell is amazeballs. Now there is a 10 pound limit on the objects you can affect, so that's going to have to be managed. But it still has amazing synergy with targeting enemy clothes. If you can get their garments, they are pretty much screwed. Now I will say that the condition imparted by this is unspecified, so it's going to be up to your DM. But it's at the very least grappled so that it can't move. And frankly, in my opinion, you should be able to get Restrained out of it. And Restrained is an amazing condition to impart to enemies, especially with no save. Now, it's also interesting to target enemy weapons, in some cases, if they've got a really great weapon and not much in terms of a natural weapon attack. And targeting enemy shields can also be intriguing, because they're stuck to it. It requires an action for them to remove it. And then once they do, they are at least at AC minus two, and maybe even more if they have a special shield or a magic shield of some kind. Now it does have a range of touch, and this can be problematic, because a no save option is much less attractive when there's an attack roll involved, and then you can't always get it off with certainty. However, as I read this spell, rules as written, there seems to be no attack roll required. There are similar spells, such as Bestow Curse, that are touch attacks with no attack roll required. And there are spells that do require an attack roll, like Inflict Wounds or Plane Shift, and it's spelled out in the spell descriptions. So in my opinion, I don't see that an attack roll is necessary here with Immovable Object, although of course it is your DM's opinion that counts. Still, I think you can make a great case for it and that you're supported by the rules. 
However, if the DM is not amenable to that, you could also just combo it with an ally who is throwing a net on the enemy to restrain them, and then you cast a movable object on the net. And while this does sound great in principle, it is a confusing interaction that you're going to have to work out with your DM. In my opinion, this would result in an inability to escape by cutting the net, and quite possibly make it impossible for the target to escape at all. Because as I see it, if the net is wrapped around a target, then moving it would be pretty much impossible. I've run it by some other DMs, and they tell me that they might rule that a successful check can result in no restrainment, even though they would still be under the net so they couldn't move. So your mileage may vary, but regardless, at the very least, escaping the net should require a strength check versus your spell save DC instead of a strength or dex check versus DC 10. And for a crazy good combo, consider that the caster can also acquire distant spell which when applied to spells with a range of touch confers a range of 30 feet, and now the caster can inflict a ranged no-save control option. That is sneaky elite, especially for only a second level spell. Now the last way that you can use immovable object that I think can be pretty cool is that rules as written, it does seem to create a sort of de facto fly plus hover speed as users can choose to move it. Now this is up to interpretation, but when I see the word can in a spell description, that indicates to me that the user of it has the option and is can be pretty flexible with those options. So in theory, you could cast it on your pants or your boots, and now you can use it to walk up a sort of invisible staircase at will, not to mention also being immune to forced movement. Now again, your DM has to buy in. It does seem a tad awkward in my opinion. I don't think it should necessarily work on pants, because then you would have trouble selecting which leg, I think. And boots are more workable, even though they are still kind of awkward and could be just asking for an ACL surgery in some cases. But do note that boots are technically two objects, even though some DMs will consider them one. But that said, if you really want to pull it off, you could just cast it twice. And it's not really an issue if it's permanent through a sixth level cast. Right, you could just do the boots, and the pants, and the gloves. And so that's where I think this spell really starts to shine, is when you can get it at, uh, cast it at 6th level and get it permanent. So while I am a little bit skeptical of this application of Immovable Object, I have made an informal survey of DMs, and it seems like most of them are pretty receptive. A lot of them are going by the rule of cool, and they think it sounds like a cool idea, so would allow it. So ask your DM, and I'm sure your DM will explain to you how it works at his table. So that's it. That's my take on Immovable Object, a surprisingly strong spell available to Graviturgists, which are normally a surprisingly weak subclass for Wizards. But it's flavorful, and I can see wanting to play one just to try it out. And if you do, man, Immovable Object is a spell that impresses me. So you do have to talk to your DM about how it works exactly, but I think most DMs are going to be pretty receptive to it. You know, otherwise they'll just never see a movable object cast at their table, right? So regardless, let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. This has been Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bronze Bafflestone. See you next time.